Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at DevOn, or is it DevOn? I don't know. Let me know the correct pronunciation. This is one of the few times I'm not going to delete your comment if you're correcting a pronunciation because I have no idea. So uh, this is a distribution which is Debian without system D. Now the traditional dev one runs, I'll say that throughout the video. Uh, the, the traditional dev one runs sysv, uh, which is an option. This new version also has the option to do, is it called OpenRC? I always get it wrong. I think it's called OpenRC. I have it in the description there because I kept, kept getting it wrong. And uh, it's an experimental one. That's why I actually chose to install this on. Now, there's not a specific VirtualBox edition, uh, which basically means you can still install on a virtual machine. We're going to be looking at it on a virtual machine. But that basically means that guest editions do not work out of the box. Um, I did have to get them manually installed. So I did that. So uh, all I did is I installed it. I installed it with the net installer because the non-net installer was 4.4 gigabytes and it was going to take me about 35, 40 minutes to download. Net installer, 350 megabytes, downloaded that one. It installed the system completely up to date at the time of install, which was just fine. And then I just went through there and prepped, uh, prepped the system as you would traditionally prep Debian to install the virtual machine guest editions, got those installed and there were uh, no real issues with that. So why might you want to use DevOn? Well, it's going to be Debian and it's going to be the latest version of Debian, but it is, as some people have said, a little bit not as optimized, not quite as polished, but it does not have System D. Now, I have not seen for me a major reason why I should not be running system D. Some people say it's a government backdoor or all these other things. I have not seen any solid evidence for that. And so I'm not necessarily going to buy into that. But what I'm not going to say is don't ever worry about it. If it is an issue with you, look for distributions that are not based on system D. And this is one of those. I believe MX Linux also uses sysv, if I'm correct. Um, but this is a, a good option. And it's basically it installs Debian without system D. You have the two options, as I said. Uh, you have the sysv and you have your... Um, uh, you have your sys, uh, sysv and openrc is what I'm running here. And uh, let me go ahead and get logged into the virtual machine and we will jump on over and have a look at this. All right, so since you're installing Debian, you really do have a choice between a variety of different desktop environments. I decided to go with Plasma this time just because I haven't run Plasma for a while. I almost chose Cinnamon. You had Cinnamon, Gnome, Mate, XFCE, Plasma, and I think one or two other options as well. And so here uh, we are installed. Of course, we are running full screen because I've went through the process of manually installing the VirtualBox guest edition. So just do a online search to look at how you install the guest editions and then um, pop in the CD, run the auto run, and you're all set to go. Of course, you had to do that from, since it's based on Debian, Debian does not add your basic user to the sudo group. You have to log out, log in as your root user, um, or you can add your user to the sudo group, whichever one you want to do. Um, I've added myself to the administrator group now, so I can't actually run updates and stuff, but I did everything through the root first. So here we are on the desktop, and we're not going to have any real surprises here. If you are familiar with Debian, you're going to have a very similar experience. Just out of the box, of course, we're running Plasma. Uh, no... Uh, no surprises here, although, hey, surprise, surprise, I have no other wallpapers to choose from. Really? Uh, I think that Debian might do that as well. We don't have a lot of wallpapers, but hey, it's Plasma. We can click on this button and look for wallpapers to download. That's one of the reasons I love Plasma, just the ability. Ooh, what's this? This looks cool. Uh, I don't think I need 4K. Let's just go with the HD here. So, All right. Let's go ahead and apply that. Ooh, beautiful. Let's go with that. All right, so there we are. Um, and of course, uh, let's see if we have options, layout, desktop, or folder view. Of course, the folder view will enable your icons. Um, of course, that just crashed on me. I'm not sure why, but uh, let's go ahead and pull that guy back up. And uh, now we have other options. Maybe it's just resetting some things inside of there. Let's have a look at what is installed on our system out of the box. Uh, just basic build here. So education software, mathematics, and science. 
uh, graphics. Uh, we have LibreOffice. We have GIMP. Uh, we have KDE. By the way, um, uh, Quidsub just did a video on the new Glimpse, the unoffensive fork of GIMP, uh, if you want to have a look at that. Uh, we do have a couple different uh, browsers installed. We have Conqueror, of course, and we have Firefox. We have Kmail installed. Basically, your full suite of KDE applications, because when you're installing Debian, you're going to get pretty much anything that's going to come with a traditional Plasma install. We should have, there's Kmail again. Looks like we have LibreOffice. Whoa. Let's go back to that again. Trying to see if we have uh, LibreWriter, so word processor. So right now, if, you, if you're uh, kind of new to Plasma, the default is it's going to tell you what it is here and the actual application name in the bottom. You can change that in the system settings. Um, if that's a little annoying to you, it is kind of annoying to me. So when I run this production, I like to do that. Uh, you can see there's really not a lot else. Uh, so they did actually de-bloat some of the system a little bit. Debian does come with a lot of games and other things installed that I've never been a huge fan of. And so it's good to see the, those taken out. We're running here on just over half a gigabyte of RAM. Of course, this virtual machine is running six gigs and four CPUs. So it is running fairly well. It's uh, responding quite nicely. I'm not seeing any real issues. So as far as uh, basic tools, utilities, we're not gonna have any surprises here. Uh, ultimately, all we are looking at, and, and I don't think there's anything here from, uh, from this distribution that really makes it stand out on its own, other than we've taken Debian, we've gotten rid of system D and we've added our choice of system initialization. This version here though does look a little bit more polished. It almost feels like I probably can use it. Um, uh, I probably can use it in production and I don't think that I've had that uh, feel when I've looked at this before. So uh, here's discovery. We can uh, see the different applications that are here. Maybe. Are there applications? I don't know. Apparently I'm not getting anything here. We might need to refresh our cache here. Okay. So I think in a nutshell, that is uh, Dev1. Um, not a bad system overall. Hey, like I said, we have Debian. We have no system D. We have your choice of installers. I think what we might want to do, let's go ahead and have a look at the installer, shall we? So give me a second and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, wipe the system out and we'll have a look at the installer for this. And uh, when we do that, you'll get a chance to kind of see how the installation runs. Uh, and really it's it's uses a basic Debian install, so uh, it's not going to be super surprising. There's really the one change that is you have your choice of uh, desktop environment while that's always in Debian you have your choice of system initialization let me get rid of that install our net installer here and we'll go ahead and get this guy started up so we'll see how far we can go through this installation process so here we have a uh, graphical installer here we have your basic install we have an install with speech synthesis that'll drive me crazy um, I don't like that, Dave. Um, so here's our basic installer. If you have installed Debian before, this was going to be very familiar to you. I said there's really only going to be one major change that's going to be different. It is going to take you about 20, 25 minutes to install, particularly since we are running, uh, since we are running this as a, um, as a net installer. So it's downloading everything it goes from the net, but that is a good way to get a system that's completely updated out of the box. It's pretty much doing everything for its, itself automatically here in my virtual machine. Um, the only major issue, if you are testing this in the virtual machine, understand it will not run guest editions out of the box, so you're going to be stuck into a 1024 by 728 resolution unless you know how to change your uh, or install your virtual uh, guest box whatever you know what I'm talking about <laughs> install your virtual machine guest, guest box edition all right so here we are I'm trying to type stuff and talk at the same time so here we first set up a root password here is our basic user username and our password of course I gave the 
uh, root user and the my basic uh, user the same password. Don't do that if this is a production system, but we're running this on a test system right now. It's detecting my disks. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to kill my partition here in order to do this. But I found here that guided use entire disks worked well for me. We also have the ability to set it up encrypted, and you can do a manual disk configuration as well. So, of course, if it is production, uh, if you have anything sensitive at all, definitely I encrypt. Uh, recommend encrypting it. So here we have our all files one partition, which is uh, recommended. You can do a separate home partition and a separate partition for home var and temp. Uh, new users just go ahead and use our first one and now we are going to finish partitioning the disk. We have to toggle this one to yes and toggling that one to yes will now partition the disks and start working on the installation. Now hopefully we can get to the step where we are going to be installing, uh, choosing our initialization system before the full install. I think that is the case. Okay, so this step of the installer, then uh, it asks us if we want to scan extra CDs or DVDs. We're going to say no. You would say yes if you were if you had downloaded the entire library and burnt this onto disks. You might need to swap your disks, but since we're using a net install, we don't need to do any of that. Choosing our package manager. So basically, this is going to choose an archive mirror in the country where you are at. So I'm going to pick United States. And then we have three options to choose from. You have us.devdev1.org, or we have devdev1.org, or package master dev1.org. We're just going to go ahead and use the first one. I do not need to do anything for my uh, HTTP proxy. So we'll go ahead and do this. It's going to configure apt. And hopefully, the next step is the the installation system. Um, we're going to stop just shy of the final running the installation because that part will take quite a bit longer to do, but we can walk all the way up to that part. All right, so configuring popularity contest. Note the default option is no. This is what I like to see if you want to do any form of data collection on a system. It should be explicitly opt in. Debian and Dev1 do it right. Praise. So that's very good. By the way, there was an article on uh, It's FOSS today, or was it yesterday? It was either yesterday or today, uh, looking at the Zorin data collection that a Reddit forum popped up. And uh, my last video on Zorin 15 Lite was in there and um, uh, in that article from, on It's FOSS, which is cool. And uh, one of the cool things about Zorin, though, is they are working on making that at least have an option as to the install. I don't know if it's if it's an opt out or if it's an opt in system, but they did say it is going to be in the next Zorin release, just an FYI. So we're going to say, no, I do not want that to run. Should have pushed that button before I talked. All right. So over here, we can choose our Dev1 desktop environment. I don't, I don't know what this first one is. Maybe I should run with that. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. And we have the option XFCE, Mate, Cinnamon, uh, KDE, LXQT. Uh, I'm guessing Dev1 desktop environments probably GNOME, um, if I believe that's, I think, what Debian's is. So let's just go ahead and run with that. Why not? Go ahead and click our continue button there. All right, so after the packages have installed, now we have the option to choose which our initialization is. So um, so we have sysvinint. Um, so the original sysv initialization is a standard choice recommended. If you don't know what all this is about, just go with this first option. OpenRC is experimental. It's an alternative initialization system and uh, that is currently being tested and you can choose that option as well. Uh, so it doesn't matter. The first one actually I did open. Let's go ahead and do the sysvent now. So go ahead and do this. And now it uh, reminds us what we've chosen to use as if we had a choice to go back. <laughs> and go ahead and do this. And it should actually probably take a little bit more time. So it looks like it's installing Grub. Maybe it's about done. I thought it was going to take quite a bit longer. So this step here, we need to decide where we want to install it. So you are generally going to want to install Grub. The only time you do not want to install it, so this is your bootloader. The only time you do not want to install this is if you are installing this on an, a disk that already has Grub, in which case you're going to be running a Grub updater to find the new build. So in this case, yes, we are going to, and uh, we are going to choose this hard disk here. 
and then it'll go ahead and install Grub in the proper location that we need to do. And then it's going to finish up the installation and we should be just about set. So it says installation is complete. So let's go ahead and uh, reboot the installation. So it will actually kick the uh, ISO out and reboot the system and we will be able to log right back in here into our system. So we went with the default and maybe that's why it took a lot less time to install. <laughs> I don't know, I'm doing Plasma does a lot. All right, so here's our basic option. Now, I actually had the option of my uh, of my login screen when I did Plasma. This one here, we're just getting our basic one. So let's go ahead and uh, get logged in and see what we get. So you can see that we're not full screen. This is because this system does not uh, this system does not actually give us a um, uh, guest editions for the virtual machine. So I'd have to manually install those. Okay, so we can use the default configuration or uh, an empty panel. Let's go ahead and just use the default configuration because I'm not going to be fighting with this a lot. Uh, so it does look like, you know, is this XFCE? Okay, so our default's XFCE. I wasn't sure what our default was going to be, if that was going to be GNOME or if that was going to be XFCE. So here we have our, our basic default XFCE. And of course, uh, let me try um, going with a bigger screen resolution. I'm pretty sure it's not going to work. Yep, not going to work. Um, so that's just because guest editions are not here. Um, we did have, what's the kernel? It's at uname-r. For those asking about the kernel, 4.9. Well, hey, at least I could say the one I'm running on right now is actually older, but I was expecting a little bit newer of a kernel. I guess not, though. So we are running kernel 4.9 for those guys that have been asking. So uh, let's see what we have out of the box on this build here. So just basic XFCE tools. We are running only 4% of our six megabytes here. Um, let's see. We have LibreOffice. We have GIMP. Let's see what version of GIMP we're on. 2.8 is our version of GIMP. Which I actually found, I think, um, even Linux Mint 19.2 is still running version 2.8 of GIMP, I think. Okay, let's go ahead and close GIMP out. And we have LibreOffice. Still running LibreArt Office 5. I think it's like this is a new version of Dev1. It just came out. I'm surprised it has such old packages. So this must be still running on Debian 9 instead of Debian 10. I thought it was based on Debian 10. Uh, so we are running 5.2. So I guess there's a criticism we have of the system is yeah, it's uh, everything in here is pretty stinking old. Do we have VLC 3 yet? Nope. I don't think so anyway. That does look like the VLC2 interface. Oh, it is three, okay. Well, we have VLC3, that's good. So that's about what we get. Um, there is installing Dev1. It does look like the packages are quite a bit older in there. And so that's maybe that might be a little bit too old for some people. It just kind of depends. Uh, that's kind of up to you but hey we do have a good system it's going to be uh, fairly stable based on Debian it has the alternative um, alternate um, initialization systems so that's your thoughts uh, go ahead and uh, make your own opinions about whether that's a good system or not a good system